Hey everybody, welcome back. So in last week's video, link in the cards above, I did kind of a quickie test and review of the Harbor Freight Drillmaster 2-inch bench top cutoff saw. That is the saw with the very thin steel tooth steel blade. For those of you who want a better reference than that and don't want to go look at the other video, here is the box. And um, item number is right there in the upper right hand corner. But and one of the things I tested it on was trimming brass cartridge cases like this one. And before I go any further, if the YouTube sensors are watching this, nothing in this video is a firearm, nothing in this video attaches to a firearm, nothing in this video could be used to shoot or pew 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 or anything like that. So with that absurdity out of the way, I um I also looked at this. This is just off thing averse and this is designed to let you put a, a cartridge case in it like that brass cartridge case and then trim it off so that it can be so that 556 or 223 can be converted into 300 AAC or 300 blackout whatever you want to call it and you see we trim it off right at the shoulder and then we use a sizing die to put another much smaller shoulder on it and we can load in a quite long 30 caliber round instead of the the 22 caliber round that goes in the um, 5.56223 so with that being said I found that that works pretty well but there was a couple things I didn't like about it First, I didn't like the fact that you have to set your length by moving it this way, back and forth. Unfortunately, to me, that makes it not really repeatable from one session to the next unless you lock it in. And um, also, I was getting a lot of this kind of action, too. I was having my typical troubles doing anything right because I tend to do things a little too quick sometimes. And I was cutting some off at an angle. Now... This is not, when you cut it off on this, that's not the final trim length. You then go into a case trimmer and you take the rest off. You just don't really want to have to do a lot with a case trimmer because um, you'll wear your equipment out and um, if you're like me and your trimmer is hand operated, it's just too slow. So we want to get a rough cut with something like this. So I set out to improve upon this. And to be quite honest, it turned out to be more challenging than I thought. That is a whole lot of angles going in different directions, chamfers going in different directions, and it um, turned out to be quite the challenge to do in Fusion. What I ended up doing was having to slice it into multiple parts to put the chamfers in, and then put the parts back together again when I was done. Maybe other ways to do it, and as you can see, I have some failures here. Um, there's probably another half a dozen failures floating around because I'm like a writer who writes a page and he doesn't like I tend to ball them up and throw them in the garbage and as you can see I also tried using fillets instead of chamfers because I like filleting and that didn't work out so my first goal was to make it so it sat down in that saw and locked in and if you look at the saw you can see it's got a, a hump here and then a depression here with a curved edge. So my thought was to make a part that locked into that. And that's what I did here. And the curved here. So when you set mine in, it locks into that. And it will not move from side to side. So that, now that begs the, pro, the question, how do we adjust trim length? So now that I have it so it's locked in and can't move, and yeah, you're still going to have to tighten it. But um, it's almost, it's very difficult to get it anywhere other than in. Because once you slide it in, it locks. It slides down onto there and it won't move more than half a millimeter, maybe a millimeter. So then I came up with the idea of putting a thumb screw with a nut on the end. So now when we slide it in, it locks in. And now we can adjust using this thumb screw and then I made a little plastic nut to tighten it with. And if you don't like the plastic, you can always go ahead and, um, and put, a, put an insert and a metal one into it. And um, 
These are just McMaster car components from Fusion 360 that I dropped in. See if I can get that cord out of the way before I cut it. It's another one of my favorite things to do is cut cords on saws and things. Done that many, many times. So let's give it a try. I don't know how it can fail, but um, here I go again. Part goes in like that. Here comes some noise. And you just, you hold it with your thumb. I don't have any way to retain the case. Be smarter than the saw. I know, I know who that's coming from, right? And then you can just use the next one to push that one through. But that's the wrong one because that's the one that's already been trimmed. hate that protect that little safety thing there that's probably going to wind up coming off of there getting broke by accident anyway there you go as you can see where's the one I already did as you can see it leaves a, it leaves a rough edge on it but it's going to go into the trimmer to be trimmed back to the correct length and of course then deburred but as you can see it is a tiny bit longer than what we really need to be so the rest of that is going to get trimmed back on the on the case trimmer and then be the bird so and if you want to adjust that you have about I don't know maybe three millimeters of adjustment longer why you'd want it longer I don't know and you have some adjustment this way probably at least three millimeters four millimeters that way if you want to try and trim it closer to length anyway I'm gonna put this up on Thingiverse for those of you who asked me if I was gonna design my own the answer is, well, yeah, I did design this from the ground up, but it's still pretty much a remix of the um, of that first orange one, this one here. So I'm going to put it up on Thingiverse as a remix, and I'll put the McMaster car components on it too, in case you don't have any other way to do it. And like I say, if you prefer metal, you can always sink, heat sink a... Um, a threaded ferrule in there and, and add metal metal parts to it but honestly it isn't necessary that's fine you're not really going to be putting any force on it i probably printed out of something other than white too maybe black because the white's going to get awful dirty i was just using what i had in the machine anyway that's it for today hope you guys liked this video enjoyed it learned something please like and subscribe hit notifications and i'll catch you guys the next time bye for now